We're looking at finding solutions of systems of linear equations. We've already seen how to use Gaussian elimination to find solutions of systems of equations. And I will link the playlist down below in the description of this video. What we're going to look at now is using Kramer's rule to solve systems of linear equations. So before we can use Kramer's rule, firstly, you need to know what systems of linear equations are, what types of solutions they get, and then how to find determinants of square matrices. We need that for Kramer's rule. So I will link the playlist on how to find determinants down below, and you can make sure you can do that before looking at Kramer's rule. So let's take a look. For a system of three equations and three unknowns. Now, I know there's a lot of variables floating around here. We'll look at it with an example. But just to generalize, if I've got a system with three equations and three unknowns, and this can be expanded to bigger systems, if I've got the coefficient matrix A, so the coefficient matrix of the system, and if the determinant of A is non-zero, so this, there's two things attached to this. Firstly, I must be able to find the determinant of A, meaning my coefficient matrix has to be square. So I will need the same number of equations as unknowns. And then the determinant of that coefficient matrix must be zero. Then I can find the x1, x2, x3 x, as follows. x1 is the determinant of the matrix A1. We'll talk about that now. Divided by the determinant of A. So that makes sense that the determinant of A must be non-zero. But A1 is the matrix I get if I substitute the first column, because I'm looking at A1, with the values on the right-hand side, B1 to B3, in matrix A. So let's take a look what this means. Here I've got a system. The coefficient matrix is given 2, 1, minus 3, 1, 0, 2, minus 1, minus 1, 1. And I've got my matrix B, minus 8, 7, 3. So we're going to be calculating a whole lot of determinants and just use these determinants to calculate x, y, and z. So firstly, let's look at what our determinant of A is, because we need that to be non-zero. So we need to start with that. I'm going to use the second row. So I've got 1 times minus 1 to the power 2 plus row 2, column 1, times the determinant of 1 minus 3 minus 1, 1, plus 0, plus 2 times minus 1 to the power row 2, column 3, so 2 plus 3, times the determinant of 2, 1, minus 1, minus 1. Oh, too many lines there. 2, 1, minus 1, minus 1. So that gets us to minus 1 times 1 plus 3, so 1 minus 3, so it's minus 2, plus 0, minus 2 times minus 2, minus minus 1, so minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So that gives me 2 plus 2, which is 4. So that determinant is non-zero, so we can use Kramer's rule. So to find x, I'm going to look at the determinant of the matrix A1. Now, A1 is what I get if I substitute the first column with this matrix B. So minus 8, 7, 3 instead of the first column. 1 minus 3, 0, 2, minus 1, 1. Now, it's brilliant mathematics that this actually works, that I just divide two determinants to find a value of x. We didn't even look at the equations as they stand there. So just take a moment to appreciate the beauty of this. So to find the determinant of A1, you can use any row or column. Yet again, I'm going to use the second row because there's a 0 in it. So it's 7 times minus 1 to the power of 2 plus 1. Determinant of 1 minus 3 minus 1, 1 plus 0 plus 2 times minus 1 to the power row 2 column 3 times the determinant of minus 8, 1, 3 minus 1. So that gives us minus 7 times 1 minus 3 is minus 2 minus 2 times 8 minus 3, which is 5. So that gives me 14 minus 10, which is 4. So Kramer's rule tells me that the value of x is then the determinant of a1 divided by the determinant of a. 
which is 4 over 4, which gives me the value of 1. So that's what x is. It seems like we totally ignored the system, but we used all the values in the system, and that got us to the value of x. Now, similarly, we can find y and z, and we will do that, because we can test out, check whether our answers are correct by substituting, but we need all three values. Now, we already have the determinant of a, so we don't have to keep calculating that. So let's take a look. If I have to calculate the determinant of A2, now I'm after the Y value, that'll be the determinant of the matrix 2, 1, minus 1. Now the second column I replace with minus 8, 7, and 3. My third column stays the same, minus 3, 2, 1. Now that we can't get away from this, we'll need to pick any row or column. There's no zeros there, but that's all right. I'll just take the first row, so it's 2 times minus 1 to the power 1 plus 1 times the determinant of. Eliminate that row column, I get 7, 2, 3, and 1. Minus 8 times minus 1 to the power row 1, column 2, times 1, 2, minus 1, 1. And then minus 3 times minus 1 to the power row 1, column 3, and I get, eliminate that row and column, 1, 7, minus 1, 3. So let's do the calculation. I've got 2 times 7 minus 6, which is 1, minus 8 times minus 1, so it's plus 8 times 1, minus minus 2, so it's 1 plus 2, which is 3, minus 3 times Minus 1 is minus 3 times 3 minus minus 7, so it's 3 plus 7, so that's 10. So I've got 13 minus 24 minus 2 gives me minus 4. So that tells me the value of z is minus 4 over 4, which gives me minus 1. So there we go. Sorry, that is the value of y. And z is the last one we're going to calculate. For z, I need the determinant of a3. So I take the matrix A, I substitute the third column. The first two columns stays the same. I substitute the third column with minus 8, 7, and 3. And to calculate that determinant, you can use any row or column. And I will give you a chance to do that and tell you. So you do the calculation and see that you get 2. 12. So therefore, the value of z is equal to 12 divided by 4, which is 3. So my solution set to this system, x, y, z, x is equal to 1, y is equal to minus 1, and z is equal to 3. You can use those values, substitute them back into the equation, and you will see that they satisfy all three equations. And that is using Kramer's rule.